Good morning and welcome to The Run-Up. I am Uchechuku Onodo. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. We're glad to know that you're there and watching us today. And we hope that today will be both informative, educative, entertaining, and everything that you want to have in a program. And today we're looking at the statement made by Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State, uh, wherein he said that Nigeria would break if the current ruling party, the APC, wins the presidential elections come 2023. We also will be talking to someone who is doing a, a very marvelous job in the hinterlands, in the slums, trying to get children to read uh, by gathering a lot of books and opening libraries for children to read in Ajegunle and hoping that someone watching today will also um, make it a point to do something positively to further the cause of education in Nigeria. And uh, moving on from there, we're going to be having, like we usually do, a surprise guest towards the end of the show and um, we hope you have a great time having these uh, amazing conversations with us. We do also hope that we are going to have uh, Mr. Okeo Tolu, who is uh, who was this morning tackling the fire that erupted in Yaba to get an update but whether we get him or not, we're hoping that they have done a very wonderful job there this morning. Mm. Uh, but let's kickstart immediately with Honorable uh, Kainde Bambuton, the former uh, Commissioner for I Information in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Honorable. Yeah, good morning. Okay. Um, APC, PDP, uh, Labour Party, and so many other parties, but there seem to be um, a lot of uh, problems within these major three parties. I'm talking about the APC and the PDP. Let's start with you, the APC. You are a chieftain in APC. What are the chances, uh, uh, seeing that we have so many problems within the party and the cry of some Nigerians that some of the things that you did did not sit there, down well with them? What are the chances of APC from your perspective in the 2023 election? I think the, the thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to be part of this event. Um, the most important thing that has happened uh, is the launch of the manifesto of the APC. Its response to the yearnings of the average Nigerian it has done a self-critique of what we have done in the last seven and a half years. And is, it has proposed new measures, new perspectives, new targets to ensure that the party continues to respond to the yearnings of the Nigerian people. So I think that is a major landmark in this campaign. The fact that we have been able to do our own self-criticism We've seen where we seem not to have done very well, and we have seen where we have done extremely well. And we want to improve on this, and we are offering Nigerians a better, uh, an improved version, and, uh, and, uh, and, and a more uh, popular democratic option uh, going forward. Uh, that is basically it. And that tells us that uh, in terms of the mass of the people following us, we have uh, already uh, done our registration, and we know that we have a large number of people across the length and breadth of this country ready to vote for our party. Uh, we, however, do not think that we should rest on our horse. We are every day trying to uh, develop early warning systems, um, rejig our structures, engage, and as much as possible, convince Nigerians that we have a, an improved model, an improved mechanism, and uh, a better uh, delivery package than what they have witnessed before. And that basically is what we, where we are now. So uh, based on those factors, I have no doubt in my mind that we are going to win our elections come uh, 2023. I know my colleague is itching to also pitch in something, but let me, let me just add this or uh, have you clarify this. Uh, before this manifesto was uh, unveiled, as it were, 
your party, especially the presidential <coughs> candidate of your party, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, had always said that he was going to continue with the legacies of President Muhammadu Buhari, which means whatever Buhari has done, he will make sure he continues and solidifies whatever the gains that, have that been. Now, with the... That is not, is not, is not correct. Your interpretation is not correct. When you say you are going to continue with the legacies, it means those ones that are admired by Nigerians. It does not mean the old, 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 old uh, Okla and Sinka acceptance. So I think we need to, when we take the words, let us also interpret them very well. It does not mean that it will be a old thing. It will take the legacy, the ones that are admired by Nigerians, the ones that Nigerians can attest to as having worked. Will be will be taken, but the one that have not worked will be improved upon. That basically what it means. Thank you very much. Can sir. you can you identify some of these ones that will be jettisoned for the greater good of Nigeria? Well, you see, when we say jettisoned, uh, I use the word improve on them. Um, take for example, uh, you 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 will have seen, for example, what we talk about about security. Uh, and we think that there has to be more work in terms of security. For example, in terms of mobilizing Nigerians behind our security policies, there is a lot of uh, a, a inadequate communication about what our security policies are doing, about how, uh, how about the chance, about the, about the challenges they are facing on the field. Uh, and, uh, and, and the point is, can we improve the weaponry, for example? Can we improve the intelligence gathering, for example? Can we also collaborate with other nations that are having the same problem and increase our capacity for combat readiness? These are areas that we can improve upon. And that's why, that's why we say that areas that we, people are complaining about, the forces that we did the research across the country, getting what people think about some of our policies and we have seen and some of those things and we are working on those areas that we think people are having issues here for example we are talking about agriculture and uh, this government has done a lot about local rights but we could do much more than that right now we know that 35 percent of the land available in nigeria is under cultivation now we intend to move it to 75 percent and to achieve that purpose we are looking at the river basins to see how we can use river basins to irrigate more land and therefore bring them under cultivation we are looking at generating commodity boards to ensure that the farmers have better deal for whatever they are producing we are looking at looking at creating establishing more farmers cooperatives and providing them credit uh, and also providing more mechanized <clears throat> machines and, make, and, 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 and and the implements that they can use on the farms so what the body has gone we have to improve on it in terms of security of the farmers the body government, for example, into what we call the Rangers program under the NCD and the NSCDC. You know, we have Rangers move to the farms and try and stand by the farmers and secure them. Now we want to expand that, you know, by developing a, also a, a, a civilian uh, version of it, so so that the worker, the, the farmers can feel at home, can feel secure when they are going to the farms. These are areas of improvement, and of course we have looked at the exchange rate. We have understood that this exchange that we're talking about, you know, uh, is partly due to the monetarist perspective, the dominance of monetarist tools in managing the economy. We are saying that we want to shift the focus from monetary to fiscal options. Uh, in other words, we are trying, trying to say that as much as possible, exchange rates will depend on the productive capacity of the economy. And therefore, our challenge is to see how fast can we in, in, encourage more production, in that more production, how can, can we encourage more exports so that the scenario can be strengthened. We are looking at debt obligation. Debt issue is also one of the issues we are having. We are saying how do we now generate the kind of revenue to be able to pay back our debt as fast as possible. And that's why you are going to have a lot of a, a, a lot of uh, uh, taxes being lowered, but being right. spread so that more people can pay. You know, some of those things. So we are not just uh, uh, coming with an old thing. We are not just repeating what has been done. But we are looking at those areas where people are complaining. We are where the show is pinching their religion and trying to see how best can we, within a short period, that respond to their yearnings. So that's really is the way forward for okay. us. Okay. Uh, all right, let me ask you this question. Um, 
Um, the APC primary elections in River State has just been nullified. Uh, can you give us an insight on why you think this happened and how do you react to, to this situation? That is no, never a perfect election. Um, when you have an election, things go wrong. There may you know, there will be one or two imperfections. Uh, and therefore, until a litigant goes to court to raise issues about the process of an election, you may not know exactly where things went wrong. So I'm just saying basically that whatever may be, whatever may be the, 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 the outcome of the, of the litigation, I'm quite sure this is also not the end of it. Uh, because there will be appeals, and until it gets to the final supreme authority, we may not exactly know the state of the of, of, of the of the matter. So I would I would want to caution myself that this is rather too early to begin to comment because there are stages in this that this matter will go, and until the final uh, judgment is taken, you can, can you cannot really be able to know what, whether you are saying the right or not. And and and, and not being a lawyer. Um, I have to also be very careful, even though I'm a political consultant, I'm a consultant and scientist, but I know that when you start at the primary level, there will be an appeal, and then until we find the final judgment, that's where we know whether this has really been annulled or it can still stand. Um, some people have said your party has some kind of arrogance. You do the things that you like to do, whether it has public opinion or not. And that is the complaint, one of the complaints that the reverse people, the, the person who took the APC reverse state to court uh, brought, that the people that were supposed to be on the delegate list were not put on the delegate list, that some, but some other people were put. So it was wrought with irregularities, and the people that were thrown up as the candidates were not supposed to because they were not elected by the bona fide uh, delegates. How do you respond to the perception people have that... APC is arrogant in the way they do their things, in their selection, in their utterances and all that. Uh, well, that's rather uh, uh, a wrong impression and it's rather unfortunate that some people can have that opinion. It's basically important that a, ruling, a, a governing party that, is, that has control of the presidency and more of the governors cannot afford to be arrogant to the people. It's uh, holding whatever is holding as, as, as power in trust for the people. And that basically means that um, if you start with our president, you can see uh, what, we, what we preach and what we do is uh, humility and uh, recognizing that ultimately power belongs to the people. So there's no reason any any, any sensible, serious politician uh, or, or, or representative of the people can afford to be arrogant because where you know sooner than later you will have to call back to these people and seek and seek their mandate now having said that uh the process of election of delegates is quite quite very very clear and it basically starts with the fact that uh, um, every every word has a certain number of people that you should elect uh, as as delegates uh, uh five per, five per, per word that is the prescription of the party uh, and for you to qualify to do it you must have spent some time within the party uh you must have taken the forms paid for the forms uh now in the in this process we talk of management of a particular process uh along the way in the in in, in the in the process there must have been one hiccup or the other uh uh, that has led to this. But I have also said, this is a complaint that uh, the, the court, the lower court has, has had two parties and they have taken a decision, but the party that feels it has not gotten uh, the, the enough justice, it also has the uh, legitimate right to go to the next level and, and plead its cause. And that's why we say that it may be too easy, too easy to be judgmental about this matter. What I know is that if Really, uh, people who are not supposed to be delegates became delegates. Then you have to ask yourself: I mean, why? Uh, who, why? Why? How did that happen? I mean, how did that happen? But it's not a matter of arrogance. Uh, you know, in politics too, there is a lot of competition. Uh, groups and their tendencies uh, who are always competing for advantage within the process, and in the, in that process, influence uh, could be part of it. So I don't want to prejudge this matter. All I want to say is that. Uh, a party is an organization of human beings. Human beings compete for power. 
And in that process, people can take advantage, you know, and certain processes can actually be abused. But until we get the final position of this matter, I would not want us to rush to, to the press. Uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, yes, just yes. very recently, Governor Obaseki of Edo State has come out to say that uh, in a statement, he said that the country Nigeria would break if the APC wins the forthcoming presidential elections. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not asking you to react directly to that. But then why would someone make a statement like that? Do you think that your party probably somehow has given off uh, uh, the notion or the, or the body language that you your party is not in for the unity of the country? What do you say about that? Is that uh God of Basaki is one of uh, uh, is probably one of our very 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 worst governors. Uh, he, he has not done very well. You know, you, you are aware that he just recently go, went to a water facility and uh, wanted to, a, a previous year been for over 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 six seven years. He just visited the water water corporation and wanted to now sack everybody, uh, complaining about the way the place, place has been run down. That should be said that he's not on top of his job. Now, if a person who is who is within his own state is not on top of his job, I think he will be taking much more than he can chew if he attempts to go to go into the national platform and begin to ventilate uh, what basically is a, is a very wrong guided idea. Uh, uh, the fact of the matter is that knowing the, pe 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 the pedigree of the president who, who, who served in Nigeria, who, who, who was in the Civil War, uh, who fought to make Nigeria one, uh, you will expect that one major thing that you cannot take from President Buhari is that he's committed to the Nigerian Federation and he is ready to defend it to the last paint of his blood. Uh, now, if there are issues uh, of uh, a crisis, insecurity in the country, which the government is doing everything possible to, to, to stop, that to, to combat, I, I would expect a very responsible governor uh, who attends the Council of State meeting and who has intelligence uh, uh, with him to be much more uh, responsible and uh, patriotic in the statements. These are not the kind of time for you to make very divisive uh, comments uh, uh, where you can play politics, you can campaign, but campaign on what you promise Nigerians to do. Uh, uh, your party, the PDP, which you, you know you know you used to be in our party, and then you know, he ran into another party. That, of, of course, shows that there yeah, was no principled basis in first place for him to have been in the party. Uh, but if you even want to campaign, that was campaign based on what you promised Nigerians, how Nigerians will look better, how will the country will improve, uh, uh, how the exchange rate will come down, uh, how the inflation rate will go down. Those are the basis on which we should be engaging each other. Uh, not on such trites, you know, such backward ideas as uh, uh, a party coming back um, uh, that mean that, uh, that Nigerians will be divided. Is he the only Nigerian who will vote? This is an election about, this is an election, and people are going to vote. You should allow Nigerians to vote. You know, he himself, he will face this uh, very soon. So Nigerians are the ones who have the votes to determine the fate of everybody. And making irresponsible statements, you know, about uh, the future of Nigeria is rather rather on, on becoming of the governor. And I, I, I think basically it's something that you should have, uh, you should, you should, you should feel, uh, it should, it should be honor, honorable enough to withdraw that statement because it is clearly very, very irresponsible. Revisit um, the achievements of this present administration and some of which you are going to build upon if you become. Uh, the party at the center again in 2023. Uh, the present administration came on the heels of uh, security, corruption, uh, fighting of these ones uh, that will bring uh, the economy to uh, a level that one dollar will be one naira. And right now, one dollar, um, one naira, or one, do one, one dollar, dollar is almost course. like a thousand naira. Yes. So um, the the way to solving a, pro a problem is by identifying what the root cause of that problem is. What have you dis identified, your party, that is trying to give us a new lease of life, according to how you're saying, what have you identified as the reason for the failure, or at least the perceived failure, because you may not agree with me that security, economy, and all the corruption and everything, it really didn't 
red head that we, we hoped, oh, it didn't really get the kind of fight that we hoped this administration was going to give it. So what are the problems that led to the perceived failure of the present administration in fighting these three areas that you intend to address that makes you have the confidence that the incoming administration, if you win, will be better than this one? Now, let us understand very clearly that the nation has a history and the economy also has a history. And let us understand that at the time the APC government came into being, there had been another party, the People's Democratic Party, which had been governed for 16 years. Let us also understand that it was a consensus, in fact, the basis on which that government lost power was a general uh, 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 agreement that it has wasted resources and set the nation back many, many decades. Now, the human's job of transforming deficits to plus within a shorter period is a major challenging issue. And we have to recognize that. That for many, 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 many months, you know, many of the structures put in place by the PDP have to be undermined, have to be combated, have to be transformed. And one of the single purpose initiatives in that respect was the TSA. The TSA was meant to ensure that a lot of agencies and ministries and departments who are holding on to government resources, you know, are forced to remit them back when they were not used, so that there could be a central accounting system for most of government, government operations. And by the TSA alone, millions of Naira uh, were, 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 were saved because of many ministries having over, over 20, 30 accounts in various banks, bank charges and all sorts. And of course, it also meant that the corruption environment was shrunk, was reduced to the barest minimum. People didn't have the kind of leeway that they had under the, the, under the PDP to go out there and concord and engage in various dubious transactions, which took away a lot of government money. So the TSA remains a major factor, and we have to look at it very well as a major achievement of the government. Uh, and another area where you have to look at, for example, is that the government turned its attention to agriculture. The government said, let us eat, let us produce what we eat. And the government took that seriously to the extent of having to shut down the borders of the country to limit the importation of, of rice so that the local growers of rice, you know, uh, could work. And we saw the evidence at the end of the day, the return, the, the return of, the, of, of, the, of the rice uh, pyramids. Yeah, in Kano, in Katsuna, in Kebi, in particular, we are we were able to achieve increased production of local rice, and not just local rice alone. We also went to cassava, you know, uh, also went to other products. Now that means that uh, we have been able to at least, you know, uh, in, in, to work our talk of is, is saying that Nigerians should produce what we eat. And interestingly, uh, one of the people working against this is one of the president candidates, the president candidate of the Liberal Party, who is an importer of big beans, you know, uh, and also that means that he, what he's importing is killing the, the, the beans, the, 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 the beans farmers who are, are not able to, to, to get the kind of price, the right prices for their products because of this massive, reckless importation uh, of food items into the country, uh, uh, to, which, which continuously suppress the, the living standards of our to, people and our farmers. We need to just... Uh, so agriculture is one area, therefore, where we can proudly say that we have done very, very well. And what we are going to do is to make sure that as we fight insecurity and reclaim more farmers, more, more farms, from the insurgents, you no know, more farmers return to their farms, and the production of food will become another issue. And of course, going forward in this area, we have already said that the Bank of Agriculture, which is the major credit agency for funding agri, will, will will resume its operations. You no, know? uh, right now, what is happening is that you are turning monetarism into into fiscal areas where the central bank is the one provide producing money. Uh, when in fact the Bank of Agriculture is, is laying prostrate. So we intend to ensure that the Bank of Agriculture takes back its place as a major funder and credit agency for promoting and producing more, better foods for the, for the country. And not just that, we have also said that we intend to increase cultivation of land, land under cultivation from 35% it is today to 75%. And our strategy for doing that is to start with the river basins. 
to use irrigation to reclaim more lands to come under cultivation and target crops that have very strong yields so that Nigerians will have no reason to continue to import food items into this country. We have discussed that. We have said that the farmers need a better deal. And in better deal, we say that we are going to set up, bring back the community boards of old. We're trying to and, have a conversation. And, and if you're not going to listen to us, so that right, we can have a conversation. Right, well, this is, uh, this is, this is... Uh, well, 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 you asked ask me, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, did a manifesto and it's very, very, uh, it's a page yes, document. Yes, for you to also let us... And, there, uh, there are other things. The, the proper... I get to tell Nigerians what you have in stock for them. Thank you. Okay, we, we have a, a few things, you know, when you say some things, we'd like to just, uh, lest we forget, uh, ask some questions that are pertinent to what you have said, but... Because for lack of time, for lack of time, let's let's just let's just see this. You know, the common man on the street doesn't really know what TSA has done to Nigeria. All he knows is that the debt profile of Nigeria is getting to sixty trillion dollars. All he knows is that the dollar is higher. All he knows is that a bag of rice that was sixteen thousand is now up to nearly forty thousand. And when you talk about you improving agriculture, you improving the economy, you bring in some uh, innovations that have helped to save the the naira. Everybody will just be wondering what that is. But maybe since we are still studying the uh, manifesto together, uh, that will be yeah. a matter for another day. We. We, we have just discovered that a lot of issues have been raised and we might need to call you back another day to come and uh, say some things. So for now, we'd like to just thank you for being a part of our show today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I really wished that he would have had a conversation. Yes. He would have, you know, so that we can ask all the questions mm -hmm. and then make it clearer to Nigerians, mm -hmm. uh, you know, answer the questions that are burning on the Niger on a, on a regular Nigerian Nigerian's mind. Because when you begin to use terms like the TSA mm -hmm. and you know, they don't they don't understand it. You understand? I, I probably would know what a TSA means because I had to do research over and over on certain issues because of the programs mm. and the kind of work that I do. How about the person that is selling food stuff in Yaba Market? Does the person understand what TSA is? Now, even if I, I, I know the meaning of it, and even as a learned person, if it doesn't translate to making my life better... And food I, on my table. Food on my table. I don't... I don't will I even really care? All those are terms. <laughs> you tell me big terms and it doesn't translate into a better livelihood for me. How would I even see that you're doing something for me? I will say, take us back to eat cheap where we will eat our cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's able to answer the questions yeah. in a better, uh, a more relatable manner mm -hmm. the next time we'll have him. But it's actually, it was amazing talking to yes. him uh, otherwise. Uh, it is still the run up and we're going on a quick break. When we return, the, the run up will continue and we're going to be having even more interesting conversations. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us. We'll be right back.